Tube socks, uh, boy, about to pop the lunch box. Yeah. Tube socks, uh, boy, about to Phil, pop the done? lunch box. Good man, how are you? I like to explain what we're doing live. Do a power lunch, talk to some of the best and brightest people in the space. And it's usually 10, 15 minute conversation. I know you have you don't have more time than that. I don't, especially for you. Especially for me. And also <laughs> what's happening with this panda? Is this when you're like feeling insecure about your look, turn this on? Well, everybody knows that I always wear hoodies and hats. So I decided to mock it up a little bit and do a panda with a story night background. I love it. I love it. Hey, we usually do lunch. Are you having lunch right now? Uh, I do have lunch. Guess what I'm having for lunch? What, what are you having? Can, can we see? Actually, can we show it to the camera? Uh, it can't. I put it away. I don't want to chew on this screen, but I can tell you what it is. Go ahead. Tell me and I'll show you mine. All right. It's a chicken salad sandwich okay. on a croissant. I love it. That is very healthy. That it fits is. your 4 a.m. workout routine. You're a man of fitness. I, I was looking for Carl Jr. nearby, right? Yeah. I couldn't find it. So I, you know, I found a New York staple. I'm in New York, so I found, oh. uh, I found Shake Shack, and I was gonna have it in front of you. I was gonna wait, but I got, I, I started starving, and uh, so it's over. It's well, I can tell you all the history you want to know about that packaging. <laughs> I, I, I want to know how. Lives. I would love to know a little bit about it. Started. Before I get started, I would love to introduce you to the two or three yeah. people who don't know you, especially your panda face. You are gonna panda take the panda face. off at some point, right? I'll, t I'll take it off right now because now, it's, now I, feel, I don't feel, I don't feel insecure anymore. No, no, you look, you're fantastic. All right, as he takes it up, I would love to introduce former chief information officer for Yard House and Shake Shack, former chief technology officer for Godiva, current chief technology officer at CKE Restaurants and killing it for the four or five people in the world who doesn't know him. Here he is, Mr. Phil. You're gonna reveal it at the right time. Yeah, I'm trying to, but now my video filter won't take it off. There you are, uh, see, in the flesh, during in, lunch, at I, home. Yeah. Being real with the hat and the hoodie because that's just who I am. Yeah, when we jumped on the call, you said, are we doing this today or are we prepping? And I was like, <laughs> we're just gonna do it today. Let's just do it today. You don't wanna see me just, twice. We already around. met earlier this week. We are, we, you and I hung out at RLC, which was awesome. Amazing event at the after party. Brilliance done by you and your team. And an absolute team. blast on the panel. Savannah Amazing worked job. really hard for it. And uh, thank you so much for coming and gracing us with your time. Like I used you so much in all the posters and everything. I'm like, if we're gonna drop people in, there's like two, three people who can do it. And I'm like, I gotta call in the big guns, gotta call in Phil. Hey, you did, thank you. You did the Phil Squared post, which was probably one of my favorite. I love it. Was it was awesome. Thank you. Had a great thank time. you for coming. Thanks for inviting me to that. Yeah, uh, I, lo I love those events. It was so nice to see all our uh, tech friends. And uh, I, I told our sales team, no selling. No selling, let's just hang out and let's just uh, listen to some music, listen to some rock and roll and hang out. Yeah, how bad was that bar tab at the end of the night? That's what I want to know. Listen, okay, <laughs> we, uh, I, I'll tell you, I, I'll tell you, I don't know the bar tab. A bar tab was like, I don't know, like, yeah, so it's not that bad. No, but honestly, dude, that was an amazing event. I think I heard nothing but raves the next day. And obviously, the, the LinkedIn post post your stuff was amazing too. You absolute blast. We crushed it. Yeah, we crushed it. Thank you so much for coming in and thank you for always all, always helping out. Uh, with that yeah. being said, uh, no one here wants to talk about me. They want to talk about you. They want to learn about you. Uh, yeah. And would love to jump right in. Uh, this is you know Power Lunch. We do a couple of minutes of chatting with some of the most powerful people in the business, some of the smartest, brightest minds. And Phil is right up there. And other, my other guests, if they get upset, it's, there's a force rank and everything right up there. Take it out with him. He told me I have to say this. Uh, hey, listen, I just had Shake Shack. When you first joined Shake Shack, it was like a small burger joint here in New York. Like yeah. I grew up in Queens. I love Shake Shack, Shake Shack. I used to work for a burger joint called Bear Burger back in the days. So yeah. watched you guys and just was like, all right, let's just copy everything they're doing. And and like, how was it? How was it experience? When did you join? How many units did you guys have? So I, I joined early stages. So I came from the West Coast to the East Coast to join Shake Shack. And, you know, it's an amazing journey that, you know, working with Danny Meyer and working with Randy Garuti and Zach Koff and Jeff Utes, I mean, the name drops all day long. I think it was so instrumental because at that time, we were the chain anti-chain, right? Yeah. We, we were small, we're standing for something good. It was amazing, amazing to build the culture of that company with some amazing leaders, you know, including, including Peggy Rubenzer, who was a chief people officer at that time, yeah. to really build out the ethos of that place and really become the powerhouse that it was. And it was also a juggernaut to get it public, right? Yeah. And also really take an entrepreneur from a tech standpoint mm -hmm. and build out an amazing tech stack that the restaurants could grow upon, you know, in scale. And that was part of the fun of the whole thing. It was hot and sweaty and dirty and all the fun stuff you want to do as a startup entrepreneur. 
yeah. especially in the technology shoes. And I think the vision of the overall company aligned with what we did technology wise, as well as the menu. Cause like people come there for the food, not the tech. They come there for yeah. the ambience and the experience. And it was a great synergy between what we were doing from a technology standpoint and an operation standpoint that I believe really helped catalyze, catalyze that brand for sure. 100%, you know, I love Shake Shack because the fiance likes it. The dogs love their dog bones. I yeah. get my burger, everyone's happy. All three of us are happy. I get my custard in the end and you know, who, there's something else to it coming from the West Coast, you're like, man, what is this place all about? Fell in love with the city, fell in love with the burger, fell yeah. in love with the concept. And I owe that brand and obviously a bunch of folks I work with, massive kudos to help with my success and my overall journey, 100%. It looked always so thoughtful and perfect from the outside. The tech all worked together. The kiosk worked with the UI, worked with the loyalty. Everything worked so well and everything was very like, hey, what are they using? What company are they using? It was never a clear solution. It seemed like you guys were really doing jujitsu in there. How did it feel all of that, putting the tech together from the inside? Was it as easy as it from the outside? Like how did, sure. how did that piece go? of cake? Not a problem piece whatsoever. <laughs> yeah. A lot of custom development, right? A lot of new stuff that nobody had done. A lot of, again, a lot of entrepreneurship a lot of bleeding edge technology and then leading yeah. edge technologies to couple together the best of breeds. I mean, early days Olo, right? Early yeah. days Fuzz, a early day Workday, like a bunch of cool stuff that we had done, all different front facing, non front facing, early day Square, early day iPad, like all this awesome kind of tech kind of co-mingled together. And look, we had a roadmap, we had a journey. We also didn't know what we were doing certain days, but that's okay, that's how you invent and grow. You know, I, I gotta say, there's two companies I love the most in terms of their tech. When I was at Bear Burger, it was Sweet Green, it was yeah. Shake Shack. And the things you guys did became companies later. Like Fuzz became a, a productized company that became Koala, right? Yeah. 50 different kiosk companies launched and they all were trying to emulate what you guys designed uh, in those four walls. So you guys gave birth to a lot of tech, you know, unintentionally. And maybe a lot of people wanted to copy the playbook when they couldn't, they were looking for SaaS alternatives. So you guys gave birth to a lot of companies, including Lunchbox. Right, humbled by those comments. It's obviously amazing to think of. And, you know, we kind of carry it forward even down to Carl's. We're doing stuff with artificial intelligence, right? We're doing new stuff that nobody's done before. Because even back at Yard House, we did stuff with audiovisual systems and, you know, recipe management systems. It's all stuff that you want to plant your flag to help the industry grow. That's what yeah. this is about. This is about yeah. leaving marks wherever you go to better off an industry that's taking care of you in so many different ways. And that's kind of one of my personal ethos is leave it better than you got it, period. Why is it that you keep on doing that wherever you go? You're like, all right, let, let's go ahead and raise the bar. It's just a personal mission. I think yeah. when people leave this earth, they want to be remembered for what they did and who they are. That's what it comes down to. And that's kind of where it carries into business, right? Business is the same way, especially in technology and restaurants. One day, it would be amazing to sit back and look at your entire accomplishments. Mm -hmm. But more importantly, everybody else can see those accomplishments, realizing that you gave more than you had. That's what it comes down to. Yeah, that's incredible, man. And, and listen, you're at Carl's Jr. now, but yeah. you were there before, right? You were there uh, when you were 16, flipping burgers, running cash. Yeah. What were you doing back there? Full my, circle. My first job in the restaurant industry was at Carl's Jr. in Southern California, which that's is okay. a trip, right? If you think about coming full circle, it truly is full circle. And I think it's because of that first inroad to the restaurant industry is where I fell in love and had a passion for the business in all different angles. It's the pace, it's the people, it's the experience, it's the smells, it's the taste, it's the touch, it's the site like you're hooked and i was hooked day one and i never left phil okay, where like do you live by too. the way i live in nashville tennessee how do you like it i love it i'm not a musician but i love music for those of you that know me and like to realize my office has always blurred loud music whether it be punk rock or whatever it might be it's fitting me well like it's wide open spaces great food great downtown scene people are humble and nice right it's a different pace from new york southern california it's kind of the best of both worlds quite frankly I love that. I um, I was hanging out with you and I was trying to see, you know, sneak and look at all your tats and, and just see all the artwork on your body. And I was yeah. looking at the Lunchbox brand. The Lunchbox brand is filled with tattoos and yeah, punk rock and rock and roll. And we're always trying to put in music and things we love and bring a part of ourselves there because it's so hard. As you know, it is so hard. You know, what are some of the things you've brought from home or from the, some of the arts you follow to some of your work? I mean, outside of the music and just kind of the cultural things, right? It's really kind of the free spirit. Yeah. That's how it is. Everybody yeah. has a different genre of music. Everybody has a different band they like. And there's a lot yeah. of similarities. It's kind of the free willness mm -hmm. of how, what I want to bring forward to the culture of the brand mm -hmm. and the team. Like it's the empowerment side. Like if you love punk rock, great. If you love country, great, right? Be yourself and be true to yourself. But same with the leadership. Like people would rather follow a leader that's true and genuine that's not, right? Yeah. It's the same thing. And that's how I carry it forward with everything I do. You go to my office in Nashville, there's Star yeah. Wars toys. Great. I love it. 
right? There's bottles of booze that people have gifted me. It's there. But there's yeah. also a bunch of tech stuff in there. It's who you are. It's a step away from your home. So enjoy it. Be comfortable. Don't have to be stuffy. Wear yeah. a hoodie. Wear a yes. hat. So that's where I carry forward. I love it. I, I think it's also disarming when you know people meet you to go ahead and have a conversation with someone. Obviously, very important, but have a fun conversation, not just about you know the technology we're all investing in, other tech partners are investing in, but also connect at a human level. So I think it's very disarming, and I think it's very inviting. And I, I would love to work for you, right? And I think a lot of people who work for you uh, always have that sentiment, right? Like Phil is chill. Yeah, I, I, I'm chill because you know I'm, I put my my pants on one leg at a time, just like you do, man. Yeah. I just have been blessed to work in amazing companies and get to a level, but I never, never forgot where I started from, or where I came from. That's probably one yeah. of the biggest things in my life that as big as I ever get. And I'm sure there's a lot of more growth because I'm actually, I'm still in school continually yeah. because I'm crazy that way. Um, where are you going? I heard this at night. You're going to, you're getting a MBA. Is Harvard. this true? You're yeah. going to Harvard? Yeah, what at is, the same time. Why? What are you, what's after? You, you're Dude, doing it, what is after? You're already doing what is I, after that. He, he, here's what's best. I don't know what's next. But it's always it. about continual education. It's like reading books, right? It's like listening wow. to podcasts. It's I'd rather give up my time at night, albeit yeah. I'll have to watch my Mandalorian and my Star Wars or certain things, right? I, yeah. I can't give away that. And continually grow my education and my personal well-being and being just learning and give up TV and other things. I won't give up working out or sports, but you just have to. It's just a self yeah. kind of gratification thing. I love it. Hey, I am a uh, Shake Shack and Sweet Green fan girl. I hear you're a Chick-fil-A fan girl. What's up with that? Like, tell, tell me about your love for Chick-fil-A. Where did it start? What is it you uh, enjoy about them? You know what? They kind of mix the best of both breeds. It's just like in and out there's I mean, also funny they're, they're both heavily influenced with regards to the guest mm -hmm. experience but chick-fil-a also has an amazing tech stack that runs their business period mm -hmm. they are so ahead of the curve because they realize they created the perfect synergy between the experience and technology it's kind of like the dominoes of the days or the early mm -hmm. days of panera 2.0 you see these industry leaders and you want to emulate them as much as you can Again, I've been very lucky to have some of these folks as mentors over the years, mm -hmm. which has kind of also helped me grow what I want to do. And how do you come and plant that sweet spot? And they've actually created a sweet spot. My mm -hmm. my middle daughter works for Chick-fil-A at the local restaurant oh, wow. here. Oh, so wow. to, see, to see the inner workings of how it is from a managerial standpoint, mm -hmm. which you don't often see as a consumer, it gives a whole other insight as well. And how they really do take care of their overall employees and how they take care of their guests. It's way That's honest. Amazing. A lot of it's through technology because that's the new medium for people to interact with. How old is she? She's 14. Do you go and embarrass her? Like, hey, like, uh, can as I get a burger? As much as I possibly can. And does she, is she embarrassed? It's like, dad, please get out. Please leave me alone. I'm working. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because I, oh, I have to God. make her say, what does that say? You say it? it's, a, it's my pleasure, right? So I try to get her to try to not say it as a joke. <laughs> Is she, uh, so that's the only I'm time terrible. you can get her held hostage by Chick-fil-A where she has to interact with you. I love it. It's, it's the only way to do it. I mean, trust me, even after shifts, she goes eat Chick-fil-A. Like she loves it to death. I love but it. as much as I can possibly embarrass her, it's my job in life. It's your job. I'm, I'm so happy you did that. Uh, overachiever in all sense of the word, uh, sir. <laughs> hey, uh, last year you received a Tennessee CIO of the Year Orby Award for uh, completely revamping CK uh, restaurant digital ecosystem and a lot of stuff there. First of all, that's a huge undertaking. Would love to hear a little bit about that. That's a huge honor. And would just love to hear like some of the things you came and saw and you're like, all right, this needs a little upgrade. And how long did it take? How did that process go? Yeah, so first and foremost, that award really is a team award like i was just the guy that was able to raise the trophy for on behalf of an organization and a team because it truly is a team effort there's no question about that so I, I take that award with the greatest pride on behalf of the company and my technology team as well as the digital marketing teams because what we had to do is basically standardize point of sale standardize infrastructure standardize security we launched apps we launched websites for both brands we launched loyalty we launched the cdp we launched crm We've done so much in two years. It's been actually been a benefit to the franchisees because that's who I'm here to serve. I'm here to serve corporate restaurants and franchisees. So to get us to become digitally irrelevant in our industry was a massive undertaking, but it took a North Star initiative with my peers at the top of leadership as well as our private equity firm to invest and believe in the vision. And yeah, it was a lot of hard work. There was a lot of long days, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. But again, my track record has been that way. My track record is we all have a vision to get it done and I'm not afraid of getting my hands dirty, writing code right? Mm -hmm. We're staying up late testing at a store. But again, it goes back to the entire organization paddling in the same direction. Everybody believed in the vision. Everybody put the time and effort to get it done. And I'm proud to say, you know, we've accomplished it. Like we're over 95% yeah. rolled out. You know, with a brand that has 3,000 domestic restaurants, wow. we're always going to have some stragglers and late adopters. But I think the achievements speak for themselves and how it's actually transforming the business. 
That is incredible. I did not know you're still writing code yourself. So I, I mean, oh, yeah. Yeah, that's I was incredible. Writing, I was writing Python last night. It makes you feel any better. Uh, we are uh, in <laughs> Python Django. Is that good? Python Django? Yeah. Sure. Is that good? Is that bad? I think so. No? Thumbs up? Thumbs okay, up, right. always. I mean, right, Python is yeah. a newer emerging, you know, language anyways. It's a little much more powerful than writing JavaScript or C or anything else, for sure. Love it. Uh, and you said that you mentioned franchises. You have to serve them in the corporate stores. Franchisees sometimes don't align with the corporate stores. Franchisees yeah. sometimes see themselves as like stranglers or the orphans. How do you uh, rally them together? How do you bring them under the tent? You know, it's it's basically, it's a pretty simple process in my world. It's transparency and honesty, right? I've created a star IT committee here at uh, CKE that really brings the best of the best together from a technology standpoint, and operations and marketing. And we talk shop, we talk about alignment, we talk about goals and objectives. But I think what we do a little bit differently is we put our, put our money where our mouth is not our foot in our mouth, which I just did, which is kind of ironic. Um, <laughs> is that we actually test out oh, the select. That's like triple entrando right there. Triple. Exactly. Yeah. It's a fourth wall break inside a fourth wall break. We actually do a lot of the testing in advance in our corporate restaurants and our labs. And then we approve out the technology. And then we get mission partners, meaning mission franchisees with us to move forward. And we allow them to test the tech and understand the tech. And then they, they become the champions themselves. So having that kind of synergy and that transparency, and not everything makes it to, to fruition, right? But that's okay because you've done it in partnership. And that's the biggest key. Often I think the mistakes are that franchisors ram stuff down people's throats without giving them the insights or not letting them to play with it and touch it. And we've actually took a different tact and it's paid off very well. That's that's absolutely incredible. And we were at only like 40, 50 locations. And, yeah. and even that level, we had like a thousand franchises and this was always a struggle. The way you guys have done this for 3000 locations and rally all those folks together, it's a, that's a, uh, achievement of its own. Forget about implementing all the, you know, cutting edge tech you guys have uh, implemented. What's the best favorite promo from that you guys have put out there that you're like, oh, I'm so happy this one went out. So from a marketing standpoint, like I love the Adult Swim collab we did. We, we, we partnered with Adult Swim and, that, and did a bunch of little individual characters and one of oh, wow. them was Happy Star oh, wow. um, of one of the characters. I'll, 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 I'll send you the actual link, what they look like. It's pretty killer. From a product offering, like our Philly cheesesteak crushed it. Just this last promotion to the point we sold out. Is that a namesake? Is that a namesake item? Did you come up with the, did yeah, you push no, that purposely? I, I did not know. Ironically, it came out when the Philadelphia Eagles were in the Super Bowl around the same time. So that worked out well with help from, with drive marketing. But no, I, it just, it just tasted. And again, a guy that doesn't need a lot of you know, fast food. It's one of those is kind of like, I go get that anytime. And it was really good. Just like I love the, the sourdough, you know, Frisco we do, which is an amazing sandwich in and of itself. Yeah. You seem like a big health guy. Are you wearing the R-ring? I am wearing the R-ring. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Look at Spon that. We're this is sponsored by Aura Ring, who has not exactly. paid us yet or uh, said they will, but this is awesome. I love this thing. Yeah. And so, sort of, and you know, obviously the watch. So, like, yeah, it, I got the whoop. I'm, I'm there. Nerd. You go. Like, yeah, fellow nerd. I got, I've got my Fitbit. Like, it just, it becomes, yeah. this is crazy because how well it tracks you. Sleeping. Oh my God. The sleeping yeah. part's the best part about it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and it said I didn't sleep enough during the RLC party. So happy that's over. I don't know how you guys do events. It, it takes a different level of energy to do events. It does. You know, month after month. It, you know what though? I, I look at it really in a couple of different ways going. First off, it's to see friends and peers and mentors, mm -hmm. right? That's why you yeah. go. Other parts is to really hear some amazing people talk about experiences and where the industry is going, mm -hmm. right? And then third, it's to go see vendors. You don't always get to see it in one large room and really mm -hmm. kind of see it and touch it because we just so so limited the time. I can't every vendor come to Nashville. There's kind of a trifecta their approach when it comes to shows, but also look, let's, let's be honest. We all work really hard. So to mm -hmm. go do events like your after party mm -hmm. or other things as well, it's also kind of just to blow off some steam. Yeah, like, 100%. I'll ask this one last question, which is you've been so generous with your time. You've you know, helped us and joined us as a food tech advisor. How do you pick companies? When do you decide, hey, I'm going to invest some time here and help this company out? Uh, why Lunchbox? And how else do you make a decision in terms of helping the next generation of tech, you know, go at it and improve the industry? Yeah, you know, I just recently joined another one. I, I joined Andrew's, you know, gift a meal, which is really close oh, yeah. to my heart because it's, it's, I was it's, talking it's, to him. it's philanthropic. Yes. Right. That's one of the reasons why I do it is because the, the philanthropy side of it, again, is giving back. I think also if you're kind of aligned with my personal mission and vision to leave, I think I've talked really about leaving a flag or a mark in the industry, you're making things better or it's so like close to my personal, you know, likes. That's kind of what I look at. 
quite frankly. That's why I'm very selective of what I actually dedicate some time to, especially on an advisory role. I, I'm working in survivors from different companies, but it kind of has to meet like the mind and get the mind going. It's not just another, well, I'm going to sit on a panel. Well, mm -hmm. I'm going to go ahead and just sit there and, you know, offer some insight. Like I got to get excited about it. And that's what mm -hmm. I want to kind of just go after and get the, the old jazz hands because it really yeah. kind of gets me stoked. That's amazing. I think that's it. That's our par lunch for today. I asked so many questions. Uh, that was our 15 minutes right there. Any question Ooh. from for me, Phil? How, how, how do I get the hair, man? Because I my hair's gone. The hair? I mean, listen, uh, Turkey. Uh, we okay. have an engineering team in Turkey. Uh, <laughs> we can go visit our engineering team together and we can come back. And, you know, a couple of months later, the hat comes up and wait, did he always have hair? We can do this. We can set the whole thing up. Okay. R really yes. no questions. I'm just super proud of everything you've done, man. You've done an amazing job with Lunchbox and what you're giving back to the industry. So my hat's off to you. Thank you. Uh, we couldn't have done it without you. Uh, and I mean that you're one of the earliest person to bet on us. And um, I'm still confused why. Uh, I will not ask and, or probe anymore, but we're very grateful. Anytime, my friend.